Hi, welcome back to my channel, and this is a sound off on the Real Housewives of Potomac. Okay, so before we get started, Happy New Year, everybody. Um, This episode was funny. This episode was a mess. Like, let's get into it. Okay, so the show opens up with Karen doing a walkthrough of the venue for her live show. Y'all saw that. It wasn't really nothing to talk about, so we're just going to move over to the next scene, which is Jacqueline visiting Mia and Gordon. And that whole scene was just a ball of awkwardness. It was so contrived. It was just, yeah, it was that. The whole thing was just weird because Gordon was so uncomfortable. Okay, this is a different Gordon than we saw last season. Like this was not tongue flicking at Karen Gordon. This Gordon, I don't know if his grown children or his grown grandchildren hit him up and was like, do not be on TV embarrassing us no more. Put away the creepy uncle antics because we not here for it. You look a mess. You are embarrassing the family. You're messing up the family name. Like, don't do that. I don't know. But Gordon, he ain't with the nonsense this season. And he was very uncomfortable. Jacqueline is sitting between them. And you can just tell. He, just, he, he felt uncomfortable in his own house. And y'all thought we wouldn't go notice? So they're talking to Gordon and they're like, Gordon, oh my God, the girls are so invested. They're so interested in everything that we do. They want to know why we take showers together. They want to know why we do this together. They want to know this. They want to know if you're Jacqueline's sugar daddy too, if you're taking care of her, if you're funding her lifestyle. And I don't know why they're so invested in what we got going on. They must be jealous. And it's like, Mia, Jacqueline, hang it up. Mia has been going around dropping blues clues all over the place as if you guys are a throuple, as if you guys are a thing. She's been doing that because she wants to hijack season seven and make everything about her, duh. Jacqueline and Mia, y'all are not upset that the girls are asking a million and one questions. Y'all been saying weird stuff. So that they would ask you these questions so that you guys so that you guys can be the center of attention. Y'all not fooling nobody. We know what's going on. We see y'all. Y'all are not low. We do find out that I guess Gordon made the down payment on Jacqueline's Porsche. So those of y'all that wanted to know how she got a Porsche, Gordon put the down payment. I guess we care about that. I don't care about that. I, I didn't care. I don't care. But he does make it very clear that he did it because of Mia. Because Jacqueline tried to say, oh, yeah, because you love me and you support me. He said, I love her. <laughs> he cleared that up real quick. I don't know who talked to Gordon on the off season, but I think the family snatched Gordon up and was like, you better not go back on that show and make us look ridiculous because you look the fool. I think somebody, he, either he saw himself and was like, yeah, I'm not doing that no more. Or the grandkids, the kids, the brother, the other siblings, they, they had a get your mind right conference call and they got Gordon together because he made it very clear. Like, mm -mm, I'm not with this. See, this is the kind of growth that we needed to see from Michael Darby season two. But he didn't give us that. So, child, we get into this scene. Ashley's having a girls night out with her crew they call themselves the pyts but then they didn't even know what pyt meant they was calling themselves pretty little things what is it pretty little things when it's supposed to be pretty young thing but i'm gonna call them rhythmless nation because if you're friends with ashley i know you can't dance if you're friends with ashley i know you don't got no rhythm so y'all rhythmless nation as far as i'm concerned so you know i can't help but be a little messy <laughs> But I noticed that the dress that Ashley had on, it's the same dress that Ashley was wearing last season when we had to watch her mount Schmeagle down to the Watergate Hotel. It was that same leopard number. But I hear yeah, girl, the wife of the millionaire, she be repeating outfits, y'all. But people supposed to be jealous of her, okay. So anyways, Giselle arrives and they're exchanging pleasantries and they're talking and they're going around the table. And the one girl is like, yeah, I've known Ashley for 12 years and she's known Deborah for a year. I don't believe Ashley when she says she's known Deborah for a year, but, but okay, okay, if that's the lie you want to tell, whatever. Deborah is sitting at the end of the table 
because she just is so giddy and she's so anxious and she ready to start talking to tell her little story that she got to tell. And um, Giselle's like, okay, girl, I, I see you over there excited, girl. We're going to get to you. And so she was like, so I ain't seen y'all since the spring fling. So, and here comes Ashley. Like, yeah, we were all there when everything happened. So now, Deborah, you have the floor. You can tell your little lie, your little non-story. And she's saying how Chris comes up to her. She's at the bar ordering a drink. Chris comes up to her. And Chris is like introducing himself. And he's leaning over her and he's throwing his first of all you know this girl is full of shit because she keeps throwing her hair over her shoulder everybody know chris ain't got no hair on his head how was he flipping his hair he ain't got no hair but anyways she she annoyed me the little funny looking bitch anywho she was like he's doing this and he's doing that he wasn't doing none of that because you know production I don't know. Production was like, look, we don't want no problems with Chris and Candace. So they rolling the beautiful bean footage. They letting y'all know this is Chris. This is Deborah. Chris was on his phone the whole time. He wasn't looking that funny face. He wasn't looking at her. So anyway, she finishes off her little stupid story talking about some. She introduces herself and Chris is like, oh, my name is Chris. And she's like, my husband's name is Chris. And then Chris is like, oh, yeah, all Chris's, we, us Chris's, we all act the same. Even Giselle had to look at her stupid. Giselle was like, I know you fucking lying. You brought me to film with this girl and this is her story. It was so much like the cookie lady in Roa season 12. This was exactly that. Kenya brought the cookie lady with a mustache to ambush Tanya and her story wasn't even nothing. It was, it, it was corny. It was lame. It was whack. It was just like... I was so annoyed when Kenya did that shit on that show. But this right here, this is just as stupid. This right here is dumb. This is dumb. So what the video showed us is that Chris was on his phone on the other end of the bar. Deborah was a smooth four to five feet away from Chris. And then they show us another angle. We see the rest of the Rhythmless Nation all surrounding Chris. It was one on this side, this side, this side, that side. And Deborah had moved where she was at, and she's like right here all up on Chris. So the footage showed that she was a big lying ass, stupid, goofy ass bitch. That's what the video showed us. And I don't know why y'all would lie about a cast event they had a ton of cameras. People are recording. Why would y'all lie like that? We also see that Deborah initiated the conversation. Talking about, I like that pink. Chris was not. <sighs> Deborah, girl, I hope this is the last we ever see of you because you really, you really tried it. You really, and Ashley, with your bulbous ass. Freak of nature forehead, you out of order. Because I remember that episode, right? I remember when Candace and Chris arrived to the party. And Chris left. After Giselle rubbed his shoulders down after giving him a hug, Chris left. Ashley got out of her seat and said, Candace, you can have my seat. I'm going to go speak to my friends because I haven't really gotten a chance to talk to them. So she gives Candace her seat. She walks over to her group of friends. I feel like that's when they, she told them, y'all go attack him. Y'all go flirt with him. Y'all go see what y'all can get him to do. It was planned. It was very much planned. See, Candace, you're going to learn. And I really hope that when we get down to this reunion, they really talk about that scene. Because you could clearly see that. You could see the picture. Deborah's way over here. Chris is at the end of the bar. How did Deborah get all the way over here next to Chris? We see Chris is still at the end of the bar and you have moved closer to him. And then you got Rhythmless Nation. And then I don't know if the other two girls were a part of Rhythmless Nation, but they literally had him surrounded. And you could tell he didn't feel that comfortable. He was looking around and stuff and he's giving you some dry ass responses, but he was flirting with you. Then Oscar the Grouch gonna have the nerve to say, oh, and then Eddie came over. Happy Eddie came over. Is that the name? 
Ashley's like, oh, wow, do I now need to tell Wendy? You want to tell Wendy, just go ahead and tell Wendy. Tell my, oh, if it was me, I would definitely want to know. This is this is what annoys me about Ashley, right? Ashley, you spent six seasons in denial about your husband. The very first season, that man embarrassed you by going around and grabbing people's behinds without their permission. No consent. He did it. You asked him, did you do it? He said, no. On film, we saw it. He said, no, I didn't do it. She says to him, oh, if you did it, just let me know. He says he didn't do it. Get down to the reunion. He has an excuse for why he did it. He chilled a little bit season two. But season three, the grinder situation happens. Oh, no, my husband's innocent. He didn't do anything. Karen, don't bring that up. Let's not talk about what my husband was doing on Grinder. Season four, the cameraman situation. We find out at reunion, he's done this to Ray. He's done this to Andy Cohen. He's done this to producers. Season five, this man gets caught in these streets. The escort that he purchased puts him on blast. There is photographic evidence. And you're like, oh, well, he said nothing happened. You believed him. After that, a video, a video was released. And what do you do? You show up at the season five reunion pregnant with baby number two. But you want to sit here and say, oh, I should warn Wendy. I should warn Candace because I don't want Candace to get pregnant and end up like me. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You want to destroy whatever other people have that you don't have. You absolutely would love for Candace to end up like you. You would love that. Ashley, you're full of shit. You are an evil, spiteful troll. That's what you are. You're raggedy. You are raggedy. And I don't understand how Wendy still thinks that this woman is her friend. Wendy, you about to piss me off too. Ashley, you have sat up there for seven seasons in a row, lying and making excuses for your husband being in denial about every raggedy thing that he has done. But Chris can't say hello. Chris can't invite you out to the restaurant he works at. He got to be doing something wrong. But Michael can appear on the blogs in his drawers with the prostitute in a hotel room and oh, he didn't do nothing. He told me he didn't do anything and I have no reason not to trust my husband. Girl, if you don't go to hell. Okay, so we get a cute scene with Wendy at home with her boys. You know, she's recovering from her surgeries and Wendy looked real cute in this scene. I don't know what it was, but she looked really cute. I loved it. She had like this glow to her and I was like, okay, Wendy girl, I like this. And she pulls Eddie aside to tell him the rubbish that Ashley came and dropped in her lap. They show us a flashback of Ashley delivering the nonsense, talking about some, he was real flirty and smiley. And so she was like, well, what's the problem? Well, he was smiling. So Eddie's like, oh, so I can't smile? And I'm just like, Ashley, every little thing is like a big situation with Ashley. Girl, your husband was in a hotel room in his drawers. I can look up Michael Darby caught in his drawers and it will the picture will pop up. But Eddie can't smile. Chris can't say, come to the place that I work and patronize the business that I work at. But Schmeagol is allowed to be in his drawers with a prostitute in a hotel room. Ashley, it's time for you to go. <laughs> it's time, if this is the best that you can do, it's time for you to go, sweetheart. Because, I mean, what is this? So, Mia meets with the Green Eyed Bandits for lunch. And Giselle decides to throw Karen under the bus and let her know that when they had their little four OGs outing, which they show us in the flashback, that Karen told them about how Mia checked Jacqueline's coochie with the flashlight and Mia act like she's upset about it. Oh my gosh, why would she tell y'all that? She, why would she do that? She wouldn't like it if I told y'all why she's really mad at Cherise. Mia, you wanted people to know this because you said this on camera. You wanted people to know this, okay? You've been dropping all these weird ass comments about you and Jacqueline and last season, you didn't want people talking about you being a stripper, right? But this season, you're playing it up. And it's like, girl, we are not stupid. We see what you're trying to do. Like, 
Like, stop it. But she's acting like she's upset. And it's just like, girl, we're bored. We're bored. It's not giving what I thought it was going to give. I really thought, oh, this is about to be juicy. And it's not. It's, it's just not. Okay, so it's the night of Karen's live show. And everybody's like, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. What is it really? I don't get it. She tried to explain it to me. And every time that they show flashbacks of Karen explaining what her live show is about, it don't really make no sense. Um, But who cares? It's Karen. She's always doing some stuff that don't make no sense. This event is no different than everything else that Karen does. Somebody... Decided to put this thing together. They asked, could she be a part of it? The numbers probably looked good. And Karen was like, pencil me in. Let me know what's happening. I'll show up. I'll promote it. You know, I'll do the things, okay? And that's what's, that's what's happening here. It ain't nothing different than what Karen always does, okay? So just sit there and enjoy whatever they present to you. But I will say this, the venue was packed. It was no empty seats all about. Everybody looked scrunched up together. It was a lot of people in the mix. So, you know, Robin and Giselle and the rest of the girls are throwing their shade. But you can't really throw shade because you didn't pack your venue. You should just sit there and be quiet. That's what y'all should do. Robin with her late ass. I shouldn't be calling her late. I should not be calling nobody late. But anyway. She makes sure to let Candace know, hey, that girl at the end of the table, that's the girl. That's Ashley's friend that was saying the stuff about your man, girl. And at this point, I no longer trust Robin. People were like, oh, she was giving her a heads up. That's what they were saying on Twitter. I don't believe she was giving Candace a heads up. I think she was trying to get the party started. And... Candace did look over there at the girl. She gave her a real nasty look, but she ain't saying nothing. She kept it. She's, oh, that's her. That's the girl. Okay, so the show starts, and we get to the Q&A portion of the show. Mia gets the mic, and she asks, you know, what do I do when I tell a friend something, and then they go and tell another friend? And Karen catches the shade, and Karen is like, girl, anything I said about you, girl, was the truth. So go ahead, sit down, because then nobody care. <laughs> And Mia thought she she ate and she didn't. She never really does. Karen does make sure to wrap me up in that confessional though. Okay, so I don't know if Ashley was bored or if production gave her the signal, but she decides that after this whole time that Candace and her friend been sitting at this table together, she decides that this is the moment that she wants to introduce them. And she's like, Candace, I haven't introduced you to my friend Deborah. And Candace is like, oh, yeah, that's the that's friend. The friend. That's the one that Chris was grabbing on. And she was like, oh, no, I never said that he touched me. I just said he was flirting heavy. He was flirting heavy. And Candace was like, oh, he was flirting heavy. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was flirting with you. And then Mia's like, oh, that's the friend. And Candace is like, mm-hmm, that's her. That's the one. And she's like, oh, I might be the one, but I'm not the only one he was flirting with. And it was just like, all right, girl. <laughs> Candace is like, yeah, girl, he was touch. He was doing what? He was grabbing on you. He was flirting. Oh, he's flirting heavy. Oh, he's flirting with all your friends. Oh, okay, yeah. And it's just like, this girl don't got, she ain't got no sense. She ain't got no shame. She just, ciao. Meanwhile, me and her confessional saying, you know, Candace and Wendy, they like eight plus. Deborah, Deborah's like a four. Or she was like, she cute, but she ain't cute. And I promise, this was like the most I've ever enjoyed me. <laughs> Cause bitch, she wasn't fucking lying. Deborah, you didn't even try to dress up nice. You knew you was gonna be on TV. You didn't even try to put no effort into your look, girl. What? I guess. Okay, so the show is wrapped up and all the ladies are standing around and Ashley is squirming because the moment that she was looking to get, she ain't get that. Okay, the reaction that she wanted from Candace doesn't happen. So now she has to try, try again. And she's like, Candace, Candace, um, did you want to talk to my friend? Because I know you have a weird feeling and Candace shut her down immediately. And she was like, no, no. And then Ashley's like, why are you dismissing my friend? Because your raggedy ass friend is lying and she's stupid. And Candace is not going to give her a free moment. 
F out of here with that. Bert and Ernie's daughter approaches Candace and she was like, do you want to talk to me one-on-one? -on -one? And Candace is like, no, ma'am. <laughs> and I was here for all of it. I was here for the shade of it all and the smile. I was here for it all because Dusty Deborah, you're not going to get a moment off of my girl Candace. She will not give that to you. No, you, mm -mm. you tried it and you failed. They play a part where Candace is like, I'm not talking to that Sesame Street character. Tell that bitch to stay away from me. But I feel like that was a Franken bite because the sound quality sounded completely different than all the other audio of that moment. So I feel like they they couldn't paste that, that. They couldn't paste it in because Candace would not give them that moment. She probably said that when she was being right before she was unmiked. They caught that little piece and decided to paste it in there. But y'all can't fool us. Okay, we starting to catch on to y'all tricks production. But you know, honestly, I'm very proud of Candace. You know, I would have enjoyed seeing Candace light this heifer up face to face and embarrass her. But why even give her any of that? That's what she wanted. Like she was seeking that. That's why she came over there with her lame story about Chris said, oh yeah, you know us Chris's, we act all the same. Are you for real? But um, I would have loved to see Candace wrap that bitch up. I would like love to have seen Candace wrap her like a sub sandwich, okay? But sometimes you have to really know when to not allow people, you have to know when not to give your power away. The way Candace is handling these hags is, She's doing a great job. I'm so proud of Candace because I really think that they thought they had mind control over Candace. They were like, oh yeah, we're going to hit her where it hurts. We're going to fuck with they her. They really man. thought that they were going to mess with Candace and Wendy's marriages and they thought they would unravel and fall apart at the seams like Jackie did in Jersey. And these women aren't giving that to you. See, because of so much conversation about colorism, I think a lot of people... I think that they thought that Candace and Wendy were insecure about their looks, insecure about their relationships, and clearly they're not. They're not they're not bothered like that. Chris clearly hasn't given Candace a reason for her to doubt him and the same with Eddie. So, you saying this random bird was what? Their competition I really want us to believe that at this event First of all, the venue is small as hell, is jam-packed with producers and cameramen and whoever else. There's so many people walking around with camera phones. Why would Chris choose that moment of all the moments to be flirting with some other woman? Well, his wife is right around the corner. Well, his wife is right there. There were no corners. It was literally a box. There was nothing that Chris could have done shady and it wouldn't have been caught. The place was literally this big. They expected Candace to just lose her shit and act a fool. And nobody would fact check. Nobody would even try to make sense of it. Everybody would just be like, mm-hmm, there go Candace again, acting a fool. Bring the bird lady back to beat her ass some more. That's what they thought was going to happen. And they look like idiots, all of them, Robin included. Because in Robin, you ain't innocent. Robin, you spread this stuff around the most. You are not innocent. Y'all look stupid. Y'all should be embarrassed. They should be embarrassed. Ashley, you flopped. Ashley, Robin, y'all should really be concerned about your jobs. Because all the planning that you guys put into this and y'all are just getting embarrassed left and right. Production is saying, mm, that ain't how that happened. Mm, that ain't how it happened. It's like any of you bring your friend on this show to get abused. They are whipping her behind on Instagram and Twitter. Oh my gosh, they are lighting your friend up. She's over there deleting comments, girl. Oh, your Housewives fans, they work fast. I don't think Miss Girl was prepared for this. And I don't really think that's Ashley Friend anyways, but um, that's a whole other story. I don't really want to talk about Burton Ernie's daughter no more. Um, Girl, you tried it. You look a mess. I hope that this is wrapped up because I don't hear nothing else about you no more. Okay? She gonna... 
She gonna post a little video this morning where she didn't purchase her Elmo and a Cookie Monster. Nobody said you look like Elmo or the Cookie Monster. They said you look like Oscar the Grouch. Count Von Count. Er, you look like Bert. You look like Bert. I've been calling you Bert all over Twitter. That's who you look like. You don't look like Elmo. Elmo is cute. That's not who we were saying you look like. People said you look like Baby Bop. You look like a T-Rex. You look like Chris Samuels with the lace front. You know who she looked like? She really looks like David Allen Greer. Is that her daddy? Because that's who she looked like for real, for real. Like, all jokes aside, she looks like David Allen Greer. Let me find out that's her daddy. But anyways, girl, I hope this is the last that we see of you. Because you couldn't even get a rise out of Candace. Like, Candace looked at you and said, girl, no. Girl, Mia wrapped you up in them confessionals. She Candace, Chris, I just want y'all to know this ain't over. They're going to try y'all some more next season. So be on y'all guard. Be on y'all guard. But anyways, that's all I have to say. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.